On behalf of the Department of Rheumatic and Immunologic Diseases at the Cleveland Clinic, and on behalf of the R.J. Fazenmeyer Center for Clinical Immunology, I want to welcome you to ACR. You know, uh, my center is dedicated to the intersection of viral infectious diseases and immunologic diseases, and COVID-19 is all of that and more. Uh, over the past six months in particular, we have turned our focus to long COVID, and I'd like to give you just kind of a magic minute on how to think about this. It is a new disease. It is an unexplained disease. It will be with, with us for the rest of our lives, and there's a lot to learn here. COVID-19 has uh, taken over our planet. There's over a uh, half a billion cases. And in the acute form, uh, it is an infection that most people get better from. Unfortunately, 1% die, particularly older people. Um, it has caused untold suffering and disruption to our practices and to the lives of our patients. And for some people, uh, the disease is not self-limiting. Um, long COVID represents that state when the person recovers from COVID, mostly mild to moderate disease, and then has persistent symptoms or new onset symptoms, the length of time of which is not yet determined, um, but we uh, uh, have definitions that include four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, and far beyond that. For the moment, there is no universally accepted di uh, definition of long COVID. Uh, there is, are no classification criteria, and there are no diagnostic criteria, and there are no diagnostic tests. I think most of us lack confidence in dealing with this, but we know it when we see it. This image represents the natural history of COVID-19. Uh, acute infection, either clinical or subclinical, and ultimate re recovery. And those people who go on to long COVID, it can occur from direct causes of the virus, such as uh, lung scarring or uh, immunoinfarction of varying organs. Uh, that's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on those symptoms that remain medically unexplained. And uh, as I'll tell you in a minute, um, it is a growing list of symptoms uh, that are challenging to both the practitioner and particularly the patient. The definition, as I mentioned, is in, unclear at the present time, but most of us are honing in on the three month point in time to declare a patient having long COVID. We now know that there are patients that have it far over a year, and uh, that is the minority. Most people are improving at, on a slope that ranges from very gradual to very rapid. So this is one observation that we've made. How many people are there uh, that have this? This is a website from the American Association of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. And this gives us guesstimates of how many people are living with uh, long COVID in the United States. And based upon this definition and 28 day period, there may be 30 million people. Um, more recent data uh, using prospective methodologies uh, put the figure at about one in eight. And if there have been 100 to 150 million people with COVID, you know how many people that represents. Finally, what does it look like clinically? Uh, the symptoms of long COVID include um, unexplained fatigue that generally have post-exertional malaise. That means that activities that normally were easily done by the patient, whether they be physical, emotional, or intellectual challenges, may put them into a crash and burn that may last for days on end. The most common symptoms are fatigue, often headache, myalgias, respiratory symptoms uh, without a clear etiology with normal respiratory uh, screening functions, uh, cardiac uh, echo uh, uh, and EKG, uh, and many other symptoms. And in fact, this uh, image suggests that there are over 50 uh, different signs or symptoms, and some people say far more and beyond. So for the rheumatologist, what does the future hold? Well, at the minimum, we're gonna be taking care of patients who have our own rheumatic diseases who develop long COVID. And uh, right now, we don't know whether that occurs more often. Is it more severe? 
or is it a different uh, clinical endotype? All of these things must be answered. We have no treatments right now. Many of us have access to long COVID clinics, but most patients, particularly those with health disparities, do not. I'm gonna close by telling you that I think rheumatologists have a lot to offer in long COVID, even if you're not uh, in the front lines of trying to understand this disease and engaged in research. Rheumatologists are used to clinical uncertainty and that merely when we see such patients, validating them by telling them that their symptoms are real, they're not in their head and they're not their fault, can have a very positive and healing potential. Often when we're dealing with medical uncertainty, um, we tend to minimize symptoms uh, and patients uh, often are threatened by this. Rheumatologists are very good in this area and I know that we'll have a lot to contribute. So follow our work at the Cleveland Clinic in long COVID. Uh, take in all the long COVID abstracts uh, from ACR and come back to visit our site as many times as you'd like.